So Minoka stands for myocardial infarction with non-obstructive coronary arteries. So to fulfill the criteria for this condition, you have to have the universal criteria from acute myocardial infarction. And so that's a troponin rise associated with clinical features of a myocardial infarction, as well as having evidence of non-obstructive coronary arteries on angiography. So that's having um, no stenoses that are 50% um, or more. And that's the definition of uh, Minoka. So the condition uh, is diagnosed shortly after angiography. So when a patient presents with what's thought to be an acute myocardial infarction, undergoes coronary angiography and no significant stenoses are recognised, that's when the diagnosis is made. So it's not a diagnosis where there's a clear um, a clear cause for the uh, uh, for the myocardial infarction or the raised troponin. For example, if you have a young patient who presents with a viral-like illness associated with pleuritic chest pain, the diagnosis of myocarditis is the most likely cause, and you are merely undertaking angiography um, to exclude significant coronary artery disease. Then that diagnosis should be myocarditis and not Minoka. Whereas the reason for establishing the diagnosis of Minoka is where the cause is not quite clear and it's to prompt the clinician for further investigation. So um, for example, um, in, many ca in some cases, um, because there's no significant coronary artery disease, some clinicians would suspect that perhaps the patient hasn't had a myocardial infarction. Um, however, it is important to understand what the cause is. So it's similar to heart failure. You can diagnose heart failure and then you have to find the cause. You diagnose Minoka and you have to find the underlying cause. And probably the most common cause is myocarditis, but there are certainly other causes that need to be considered. So the first investigation that really should be considered uh, is a cardiac MRI because when you undertake a cardiac MRI, it will give you the diagnosis of myocarditis. You can also see if there's a typical myocardial infarct on the, um, on the MRI, and then also may give you clues to other unusual causes such as a cardiomyopathy. So it's important because in, the, in contemporary cardiology, a lot of times, the underlying cause is not identified. So one of the important causes is, is coronary artery spasm the cause of the myocardial infarct? So if that's the case, and that from our research shows that in about um, somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of cases coronary artery spasm is responsible um, this can be treated of course effectively with calcium channel blockers and so if a diagnosis of Minoka is not made and therefore prompts further investigation such as looking for coronary artery spasm then you may not be able to, uh, effective treatment may not be implemented. Another cause to consider in about 10% um, of cases there can be an un underlying thrombotic disorder and so screening should be undertaken uh, for that as well but as we said the most common cause is myocarditis and a cardiac MRI will help you um, identify that cause. So again the reason for making uh, the diagnosis of myocarditis is similar to heart failure, is to prompt you to undertake further investigations to find the underlying cause for the Minoka.